If you're a type 2 diabetic and you have been prescribed by your doctor to take insulin for your diabetes, then this video is for you. This video is based on published peer-reviewed research and it's going to help you understand that as a type 2 diabetic, you don't need any insulin at all and actually injecting insulin is going to cause harm if you continue to do that. Uh, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and this video is for type 2 diabetics currently injecting insulin. The big pharmaceutical corporations love to sell you insulin because basically uh, insulin should be free or cost one or two bucks, but the big pharmaceutical corporations keep changing the molecule a little bit or changing the delivery system a little bit so that they can get a new patent so they can charge hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month for injectable or inhalable insulin now that you don't even need as a type 2 diabetic. Now, first and foremost, let's separate. There are, there's distinct differences between a type 1 diabetic and a type 2 diabetic and also LADA and MODY. So I want you to know first and foremost that you are actually a type two diabetic and this entails more than just your doctor told you so, okay? You need to get a hold of your medical records and make sure that you've had a test called a C-peptide done at least once in your career as a patient with that doctor. If there is no C-peptide in your chart, and that's a lab that's drawn from your blood and sent to the lab, if you don't have a C-peptide in your medical record, then in actuality, your doctor doesn't know if you're a type 2 diabetic or not. The, it was basically just a best guess. And if it's a good doctor, then most of the time we're right. But sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes you're a type 1 or you have LADA or MODY, and we just assume based on your age and your body habitus that you're a type 2 diabetic. So make sure you've got a C-peptide checked in your chart. Then the rest of this video is going to help you immensely. There are many, many different kinds of insulin that are recommended for type 2 diabetics. One of the latest ones is a Frexa, which is actually an inhaled insulin. And so since this is a, even though it's just human insulin, which should be basically a, a molecule that's free to you, they were able to get a patent on this because it's a novel delivery system. You inhale the insulin instead of injecting it. Uh, it's still insulin, and uh, in using this insulin as in any of the other injectable insulins is going to increase your risk of chronic medical diseases and chronic inappropriate inflammation. Uh, I'm going to run through the list of, of patented brand name insulins just so you know, because a lot of times you're injecting something and you don't know if it's insulin or not, and you just you inject it because your doctor told you to. So the rapid-acting insulins are Humalog. Novolog and Apidra. Those, those are the ones that you're going to take right around a meal, right before or right after. And then the short actings are regular or Novolin and uh, Velocilin. And then the intermediate is NPH. And then the long acting insulins are Basiglar, Lantus, and Tujeo. And so a lot of people are, are injecting Tujeo and they think it's some novel thing for type 2 diabetics and it's just a, it's a long acting insulin. Um, and then also there is Levomir and Treceba. So those are the long acting insulins. Now here's the thing that you need to know as a type 2 diabetic injecting or inhaling insulin. You don't need any insulin. Type 2 diabetes is actually misnamed. Uh, type 1 diabetes is diabetes. You don't produce insulin and you're going to have very high blood sugars if you don't inject insulin. But type 2 diabetes really should be renamed carbohydrate toxicity syndrome. And so basically what you're doing is eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology. For most people who are type 2 diabetics, if they will lower their daily carbohydrate intake. And because if you actually uh, downloaded some sort of carbohydrate monitoring app right now, you're probably eating anywhere from 150 grams a day. And many of you are probably eating 350 milligrams a day or um, grams a day of carbohydrates. That's way, way too much for any human, but it's definitely too much for you 
That's why you have type 2 diabetes, and that's why you're having to inject insulin. So rather than spend the expensive copay or just pay cash outright for these expensive insulins that really should be free, here's what you do. You just start eating fewer carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates you need to get out of your diet first are the highly processed added sugar carbohydrates and then fruit juices. All of these things are super high in very, very highly absorbable carbohydrates, which are going to spike your blood sugar very, very quickly and lead to all the damage that we know that, ty that diabetes leads to. But you don't need any of those. Uh, your doctor may have told you to, to drink lots of fruit juice or make fruit juice smoothies. There's not enough nutrition in any fruit juice on the planet to justify the carbohydrate load it's going to give you as a type 2 diabetic. Stop all of the added sugar things, stop all the fruit juices, stop all the soft drinks, all that stuff you, you surely understand is not nutrient dense. It's not in any way making up part of a complete nutritious diet for you. Then the second thing to eliminate is all the grains, whether it's rice, oats, wheat, corn, amaranth, millet, quinoa, uh, any of these things are very, very high in carbohydrate. They're basically long chains of glucose that are holding hands, and that's what we call starch. You have an enzyme in your mouth that starts to break down the starch immediately. By the time the starch has made it to your intestines, your, your small intestine, it's just pure sugar. So for most people, stopping all the sugar, either added or natural, and stopping all the grains is going to lower their blood sugar enough as a type 2 diabetic that you can stop, definitely stop the immediate acting insulins that you might give yourself before meals. And almost every type 2 diabetic can slowly decrease and ultimately stop the long-acting insulins that you take every night at bedtime or maybe some of you take it twice a day. It's very possible that when you've lowered your carbohydrate intake daily to 100 grams total or less, you can stop all of your insulin. Some people have to lower their carbohydrate intake down to 50 total grams a day in order to get rid of all of their insulin injections. Some very few people have to lower their carbohydrate intake down to 20 total grams or less a day before they can get off their insulin. Uh, if you don't already have a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, you absolutely need to demand an order from your doctor for a continuous glucose monitor. This is going to give you such an education at the table. Every time you eat something, you can watch on your phone's app as your CGM documents your blood sugar every five minutes. And after you eat something that contains sugars, whether added or natural, or grains, you can watch your blood sugar spike. You can see it happen in real time. And that's that's a very good feedback mechanism for teaching you, oh, I, did, I shouldn't have eaten the the uh, bagel because it's it's grains and sugar and that spiked my blood sugar like crazy. So that's a great tool to have. Make sure you've got a C-peptide check so that you know you are in fact a type 2 diabetic because type 2 diabetics still make their own insulin. So you're still making plenty of insulin but you're just eating such a carbohydrate overdose that you're having to inject more insulin because your pancreas just can't make enough insulin to compensate for the inappropriate, unnatural amount of carbohydrates you're eating on a daily basis. I hope this video helps a lot. If you know someone else who has type 2 diabetes and is injecting insulin, please consider sharing this video with them on your social media or in an email or a text or a WhatsApp. The only way that many type 2 diabetics will ever hear this information is if you share it with them. If my videos have helped you improve your health in some way, then please consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I make a new video, you'll be one of the very first people to know. And also consider becoming a patron and helping me fight this fight against big food and big pharma and big medicine and big, big ag and every other big who has profits as their primary motive and not your health. Sign up on Patreon.com and become a patron. It's a quick sign up. You can throw a buck or two my way every month to help me have more time and resources to fight this fight. Won't you fight with me? All right, this is Dr. Barry. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.